So to solve this, and this is definitely a little more work, and if I can, I'd like to show you two ways, but know that for a quiz, for your homework, and for the test, you have to show this algebraically. Okay, are you ready? So I'm gonna take this one, and I'm gonna move it to the opposite side. And I have not actually done this problem yet, so it's been a year since I've done problems like this. So hang with me, if I see a mistake, I'll let you know. That's my first step. I'm gonna put the radicals on different sides. And I'm already going like, oh, this is gonna be tough, okay. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this in rational exponent form. And that's just my preference. Some people don't mind working with the radicals and they don't switch it, but it's my preference to turn it to the radical form. And before I go any further, I just want to, I want to take a second and I want to just review something with you. If I said, hey, what is the square root of three times the square root of three? Okay, I just want to review something that we're going to come down here and talk about later. What is the square root of three times the square root of three? Square root of nine, what's the square root of nine? Three, okay. So if I said, what's the square root of two times the square root of two? The answer is just. So when you take something, and you take it times the opposite, what do you really do with the numbers inside? What do you end up doing here? We multiplied them and we took the square root, right? Or if they're the exact same, we just bring down one of those numbers. Does everybody see that? So the square root of seven times the square root of seven is simply just seven. Okay, here we go. So I'm now going to go, okay, I need to get rid of this. So yesterday we learned that when you want to eliminate one half as an exponent, you raise it to the, we don't just want to say opposite, what's that called? Reciprocal, what is the reciprocal? Two over one, which is the same as just two. So let's put brackets here and raise it to the two. And if you want to write two over one, nothing wrong with that. Now, the left hand side is gonna be pretty simple because what happens is the one half and the two over one we say they cancel out, but when we say they cancel out, it's not like they just disappear. They really turn into what number? One. one. Good. So I'm going to put a line through them, and I'm going to bring down 7 minus x. That's the easy part. This says I need to write it twice. Write this portion twice. Negative 4 plus 4x plus 1, and negative 4 plus 4x plus 1. And this is where it gets to be a little more complicated. So again, this is one parenthesis. Here's the second. I'm going to do FOIL. So if you've struggled with FOIL before, you're going to take your time here. F stands for multiplying the fronts. The front of the first and the front of the second is negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16. Okay, that one's not too bad. Multiplying the outsides. This would be negative 4 times this quantity. So here's what I'm going to write. Negative 4 times this quantity. Bless you. And then, okay, took care of the outside. Now it says multiply the insides. Negative four times this quantity again. Okay, now let's go back to this, up to this concept. So square root of three times the square root of three is just three. Square root of seven times the square root of seven is just seven, right? So this is the square root of 4x plus 1 times the square root of 4x plus 1, which would just be 4x plus 1. So when I multiply the outsides, I get simply plus 4x plus 1. <clears throat> so I'm going to combine like terms here. So when I look here, I start with the 16. Is there anything else here that's just a constant? Positive 1, correct? So 1 plus 16 is 17. And then I see a 4x here. That's a little bit simpler to work with. There's nothing else that just has simply an x. And now when I combine these, if you're going, how do I combine them? Well, you have negative 4 times this quantity and negative 4 times this quantity. Don't stress out about this. If I said, what is negative 4x and negative 4x, you would say negative 8x, right? 
If I said negative 4x and negative 4x, you'd say negative 8x. So this is negative 8, and we're not going to say x. It's times this quantity. Okay, let's move things to the sides that we know. So, <clears throat> I'm going to take it, I'm going to move this 17 over to the opposite side. And I'm getting a little nervous right now that I'm going to get stuck here. So if you see a different entry point, let me know. And I'm going to put this over the top so I can keep working. Just curious right now. I would like to know where you stand. If you're like, I've understood what she's done, a thumbs up to the side if I'm feeling pretty confused what she's doing. Thumb, thumbs down if I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. Raise your hands up high so I can see from where I currently are. Most of us are to the side. We do have some up and some down. Okay. I'm going to move this all the way up. Okay, so my next step right now is I'm going to move the 4x over to the opposite side. So I'm going to go minus 4x, minus 4x. So on this side, I have negative 8x, or negative 8 times this quantity. And on this side, I have negative 10 minus 5x. <clears throat> All right, I'm now going to get rid of this. That's what I'm thinking. Well, actually, yeah, let's get rid of this. So to get rid of the negative 8, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 8. And I'm going to split this up. So remember how we made that like heart shape and that negative 8 has to be shared with both? So it's negative 10 over negative 8 minus 5x over negative 8, because the negative 8 has to be shared with both top terms. Then I get to simplify. Two negatives make a positive, and 10 over 8 reduces to 5 fourths. Two negatives make a positive, but 5 over 8 does not reduce. Okay, let's figure out how can I get rid of the exponent that's a 1 half. Any ideas? Okay, so it's 0.5 right now, but what could I raise it to to eliminate it? 2. So 2 here and 2 here. Now I have 4x plus 1 because this is eliminated. And we're going to use a calculator to definitely make this easier. Let's write uh, 5 fourths plus 5 eighths x and 5 fourths plus 5 eighths x. Okay, you ready? Please follow along, grab your calculator. So when I multiply the fronts, I'm doing FOIL right now. Please grab your calculator, don't expect somebody else to give you the answer. Take 5 fourths times 5 fourths. Putting in both in parentheses, it's the same as 5 fourths squared. And do you get an answer? Put it back into a fraction. Do you get an answer of 25 over 16? So 25 over 16, this is the first term. Now I'm going to do the outside. So I want to multiply 5 fourths times 5 eighths. Well, watch. I mean, you could plug in your calculator, so feel free to do that. But, and feel free to do that, but recognize 5 times 5 is 25, and 4 times 8 is 32, with an x. Feel free to multiply on the calculator if you prefer, 5 fourths times 5 eighths. Should get 25 over 32, attach the x. Okay, so I've done the front, I've done the outside. Now the inside, same thing, 25 and 32, with an x. Now the end, this is going to be 25 and 64, but you have two x's. So plus 25 over 64 with an x squared. All 
All right, you're gonna grab the calculators for me. Are you ready? I'm gonna move everything to this side. So I'm gonna subtract a 4x and then I'm gonna subtract a 1, leaving me nothing on the right-hand side. Now I'm gonna combine like terms here. I have 25 over 64x squared. Okay, got that. So I've taken care of the only term that has an x squared. You're gonna do me a favor, using your calculator and making sure you use parentheses, you're gonna combine these three things. So you're gonna do 25 over 32 plus 25 over 32 plus negative four. Go ahead. Put it back into a fraction. What do you have, Sarah Luce? I maybe have a different, I have a different answer. Does anybody else have something different? So that I have negative 39 over 16. Did anybody get that? Okay, so let's do that. Sarah Luce will find your mistake in just a second. Thank you for volunteering your answer. So I've taken care of these. Now we, can you do me a favor? Use your calculator and combine a positive 25 over 16 and a negative one. Do you agree with my answer? Yes, no? Couple different ways to do this. Okay, are you ready? When you get to this point, we have a quadratic equation. There's three ways you've learned how to solve. One way is quadratic formula. Turn to your partner, and I want you to repeat in words, or, or, sorry, using, well, you're using letters and some numbers. What is the quadratic formula? X equals, tell your partner. Okay, so I'm going to rattle off. Here we go. On the top of the fraction is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Good? Now here's the deal. The quadratic formula will always, always work. But sometimes it's just a little more tedious, but it will always work. What are your two other options if you don't use quadratic formula? One is bottoms up, but not every quadratic formula is factorable. And the other is completing the square, which will always work, but sometimes when you have fractions, it's a little bit harder. Do you see how each one of these has a number on the bottom? Turn to your partner. If I told you to find a good common denominator, what would it be? What does 16 and 64 go into? What's the smallest number? Turn to your partner, use a calculator, go. So you can't go 64 and 8. What do they go into? What do they both go into? So does 16 go into 64? Divide on the calculator, does it? Yeah. How many times? Okay, please do me a favor. Go times 4, times 4, times 4, times 4. I need to change a 1 into a 64 times 64 times 64. So I have a 64, a 64, a 64, and a 64. Wipe out the bottom. 25x squared. Can you please take 39 times 4 for me? A little bit louder for me, please. Thank you, 156x plus 36 equals zero. Okay, you ready? Working with your partner. I don't know if this is factorable, but I can tell you myself, if I see 25 times 36, that's a heck of a big number, right? Like, I'm not gonna try to factor this right now. That seems like a little too big for me. Um, so what I'd like you to do right now is use the quadratic formula. Work with your partner, you have a minute and a half to get answers, go.
don't round it, so if you can put it back into a fraction, please put your final answers, keep them as fractions. So I'm not going to show my work inside. I'm going to grab a calculator. I think where a lot of students will go wrong here is they are not going to put the negative 156 in parentheses. Negative 156 is in parentheses. You square it. You subtract 4 times the quantity 25 times 36. This is the discriminant, what's inside. And I get an answer of 20,736. Can you raise your hand if you got that same number? Okay. And I don't think that number will be a nice square root, but let's check. Hey, it is. Perfect. That number is the square root. Taking the square root of that number is 44. So one time I'm going to add 156 and 144. The other time I'm going to subtract 156 and 144 and then divide by 50. Help your partner to achieve these two answers. We'll check them for extraneous solutions in just a second. <clears throat> Let's write down the original problem. problem. So we are going to together, we're going to try. So I'm going to first attempt the answer of six. Okay, you ready? You are going to follow this along with me. We're going to show as the least amount of work as possible and still check to see when I substitute in six for x, do I get a final answer of negative four? Okay, so I'm going to use, instead of using the square root key, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to raise this to the power of not 2, but the power of 1 half. And another way to represent, represent 1 half is 0. 0.5. So let's go parentheses, 7, subtract, again we're substituting 6, raise to the 0. 0.5, subtract, you're doing this on your calculator with me please, 4 times 6 plus 1 raised to the 0. 0.5. So those that aren't picking up a calculator, I'm asking you to do this so you're not just looking at my answer. When you're done, you're going to press enter. I have an answer of negative 4. So does the answer of 6 work? Okay, that works. The other answer I need to try is x equals 6 over 25. Take 6 over 25 really quick. And this is 0 0.2, 0 0.24. It may be easier to plug in 0.24 than a fraction when we try this. Okay, so can you please make sure that both you and your partner are grabbing a calculator. Here we go. So I'm going to start calling out the names of students that are not doing this with me. We have parentheses, 7, subtract, and I'm going to put in the decimal to make my life easier, 0.24. Okay, and parentheses, raise it to the 0.5. Subtract, 4 times 0.24 plus 1, and parentheses, raise it to the 0.5. When I press enter, what do I want the final answer to be? Negative 4. Is it negative 4? 
Okay, that means this is extraneous. So if somebody says to you, what is the solution or the answer? You don't say 6 over 25, you say the answer is just 6. Okay, we have not completed this one. You're going to find this one hopefully a little bit easier, we'll see. Can you please write this problem down? Yep, this one right here. Thank you. In fact, I think you'll find both of these quite a bit easier. We want to have the radical by itself. So I'm going to rewrite this as 6 minus x. I'm going to move the 4 to the opposite side. When it moves over, it is subtraction. My personal preference is to rewrite this. What is the nth root right now? 2. Two. So when I rewrite it, it's 6 subtract x raised to the 1 half equals x minus 4. Fernando, what do you think the next step is? No wrong answers. Take a guess. Uh, the one half. Yeah, and how would you get rid of the 1 half? Uh, raise it to the Good. We're going to raise it to the reciprocal. In this case, it's 2 over 1 or just 2. So raise it to the second. The 1 half and the 2, they cancel out or really they turn into ones, and you're going to bring down 6 minus x, and I have to write this twice, x minus 4 and x minus 4. Now this is going to be a little bit easier. Do me a favor, only the right hand side, with your partner I want you to do two things. I want you to foil and combine like terms on the right. You have 15 seconds, go. Foil and combine like terms on the right. Now I want you to take what you see on the left hand side, I want you to move it to the right hand side. You're going to move these two over and combine like terms. You have 10 seconds, go. When I combined, I ended up with x squared minus 7x plus 10. Can you raise your hand if you have the same simplified? Okay, you ready? So we have three options always. What's the first option when you solve for x that always works? Quadratic formula, right? But if you can factor it, you can always do the factoring method. So like your first goal is to look and go, do you think you can factor this? Is it possible to come up with two things that multiply to give you a positive 10 combined to give you negative 7? Okay, I want you to factor and solve. Bottoms up, you have 15 seconds, go. Okay, now we need to check. Hands up high if you have answers of x equals 5 and x equals 2. But what do you always have to do when you get those answers? Plug them in. So I think, in my personal opinion, this is something we can do in our head. Let's try this one. You ready? I'm going to plug in a 5. 6 subtract 5 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1 plus 4 is 5. So when I plugged in 5, I got an answer of 5 on the left. And I plug in 5 here, I get an answer of 5. So does that work? Okay, with your partner, whether you show work or you verbalize it, you have 20 seconds to check x equals 2. I'm going to plug in 2. 6 subtract 2 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 
2 plus 4 is 6. But then, I want to make sure I did that right. 6 minus 2 is 4, square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. And then I plug in 2 over here. It doesn't work for me. You guys get the same answer? Yeah. Okay, cross out, extraneous solution. A little bit easier than the last one, right? Okay, let's go on to this one. Okay, so like I told you, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is simply what? 3. three. When you have the exact same, the exact same radicals, that means they're both square roots, they're both cube roots, that's a, that type of concept. When you have that exact same thing, we're able to cancel things out, okay? So I'm going to give you right now, mm, let's go with, woo, let's go with, um, 30 seconds to see what you can do with this problem, and then we'll go over it together. Okay? Ready? Get set and go. of you right now are feeling a little stuck and where do I start? Well, maybe a third of you. Okay, look up here if you're a little bit confused. If you feel confident, then give it a try. So I'm going to rewrite this because for me it works. I'm going to rewrite this in terms of radical exponents. And then I think to myself, okay, I need to get rid of those exponents. Well, right now those exponents are raised to the one half power. Notice they have to be the exact same nth root. So the nth root was 2. But when I rewrite it, it's 1 over 2. So how would I eliminate 1 over 2? Reciprocal, which is? Okay, to both sides, I need to do a 2. Left hand and right hand. And to not confuse you, I'm going to put this up here just as a little review. Please look at this. This is obviously something different. But I want to just review exponents with you. If I told you right now to simplify this, remember that you're going to take the exponents you're going to multiply. So this is a to the 8th and b to the 12th. It has to be applied to both. So when I apply this 2 to the 1 half, what does it actually become? It cancels out and becomes a 1, right? So it, I bring down 2x plus 1. And when I take this 2 and apply it to the 1 half, it becomes a 1. It cancels out. So I bring down x plus 2. And 9 squared is 81. Although this is not the same problem, let's think right now. What if the nth root would have been 3? So I would have wrote 1 third here. What number would I have raised it to? The third. What if the fourth root would have been 4? So 1 fourth I'd raise it to the? Okay, you ready? Here's what I want you to do. Stop for a second, please. I want you to FOIL and combine like terms. Move the 81 over to the opposite side, and then we'll talk. Ready? Go. With your partner. you know what? When I did this problem, do me a favor. Stop, stop, stop. Do me a favor. I know for a fact when I created this problem, I meant for this to be a 3. Change this number right now to 3, making this number a 9. When I created this problem yesterday to provide you with extra problems, I meant for that to be a 3, so when it was squared, it became a 9, okay? So keep working right now, please. Are not. So when you get to this point, factoring is always easier. Is it possible to come up with 
two numbers that multiply to give you a negative 14 and combine to give you 5. Yes. Okay, so then factor and solve. Don't forget bottoms up. Don't forget bottoms up since the leading coefficient is not a 1. Just so I know where everybody is right now, who is able to achieve answers of negative 7 halves and positive 1, just so I can see? About 70%. Okay, let's do this right now. Grab your calculator. And I think this will be easier to do using a calculator. I'm going to start with negative 7 halves. So are you ready? I'm going to start with parentheses. 2 times quantity negative 7 halves plus 1, end parenthesis. And I'm going to raise that because it is a square root to the 0.5 power. And now I'm going to multiply times, here's the next parenthesis, parenthesis x plus, oh, not x, it's not x, it is negative 7 halves plus 2. Again, raise 2 because it is a square root, raised to the equivalent, which is a 0.5 power. When I press enter, I want an answer of 3. I got an error, which means, did anybody else get an error? Hands up high. So, did I plug something in wrong? Okay, let's see here. Well, we know negative 7 halves. Do you guys agree negative 7 halves is negative 3.5? Yes, no? Okay, let's try again. Here's where we could have gone wrong. Can you have a negative inside a square root? What happens if you have a negative, what if, what if you have a negative 9? What kind of answer do you get? You get imaginary. We're not working with imaginaries here. So look at this. When I plug in a negative 3 halves, on your calculator, take 2 times negative 3.5. Just take 2 times negative 3.5 and add 1 to it. Do you still have a negative number? So can you take the square root of that negative number and get an answer that does not contain i's? It's not possible to take the square root of a negative number and not get an answer that contains i's. That means this is extraneous. Okay, let's try one. And it looks like we probably can do this one just with mental math. Two times one, well maybe not. Two times one is two, plus one is three. So I have the square root of three times, plug in a one. One plus two is three. And by the way, we just learned that the square root of three times the square root of three is? Three. So does this work? Yeah. It works. <laughs>